Hi all, it's C. Porter again. I'm back, and it's been about two years now since I've started working on the book. What has happened in all this time? Well, a lot has happened actually, and over the last year I've been having many things going on in the background. I've just started on a new chapter recently, and I hope to get that out by the end of this year, so I can start going on through the late 30s, all throughout 2023, and maybe even go into the early 40s by that point. I'm going all around. Over the last couple months, I've been going to several archives like the, uh, the New York Public Library, um, Library of Congress, um, American Federation of Musicians, and otherwise, and requesting info for stuff. I'm probably going to get an FOIA done soon, which is the Freedom of Information Act, which is something we have in the U.S. that lets us actually ask a ton of stuff from the government and for different things they can decide, yes, we'll let you have this, and no, we won't let you have this. Um, but considering I'm asking about Will Osborne, who never even served in the military, I doubt that there will be anything that will be left out there, that I'll probably be able to get all my questions answered that I asked them. So that'll be good too. Next thing, the Will Osborne playlist, the Audible Discography Project, that's about to get 300 videos sometime soon. Um, it's about 10,000 views. I can't check the views right now because of YouTube's most recent update, um, which screwed stuff up with the playlist, but hopefully unlike other things, they'll actually fix that. Um, I have my fingers crossed on that though. Soon I'll be able to actually start um, putting things in their absolute discographically correct order. I haven't really wanted to do that before because of how incomplete it has been. But it is very much complete now, but I still think there's about, and just for actual release stuff, not including all the transcription stuff that happened in the 30s and 40s and all that. Just with actual release 78s, there's still probably about 40 or 50 of them out there that are just, you know, um, yet to be found. So I still have to do that. I'm still doing stuff with that. I'm not slowing down anytime soon, but it just takes a while to find stuff individually, checking weekly, if not bi-weekly, for different uh, different stuff appearing online on Internet Archive or on YouTube or wherever else, and also sometimes buying stuff myself. I kind of put myself on a budget for how much I can do with Osborne stuff uh, monetarily, so I have, I have to think about that a lot. Maybe I'll do something with the Patreon that could alleviate that at some point, but I don't know. Speaking of new stuff regarding Will Osborne on YouTube, if you've searched Will Osborne in the last week, chances are you probably found a lot of these Abbott and Costello radio programs uh, that are there from like different years. These go up and down all the time. The reason why you're getting that is because Will was one of the band leaders that hosted the Abbott and Costello show in 1945. He was on for about give or take 30 broadcasts altogether between March and December. Pretty much all these were put on transcription discs because it was, an, it was a huge NBC show. So a lot of these, you know, they'll be up and down on YouTube and other places by old time radio research or other people like that. And I'm figuring out, well, what if instead of uh, risking the whole broadcast being put up and down, how about I just do a video where it's just all Will Osborne's performances and that. So that's what I've been doing in the last couple of days. We'll probably see that out by tomorrow or maybe Sunday, but probably not tonight. I'll try for tonight, but who knows. This stuff includes instrumentals that he did, um, actual acts that he did with Abin Costello, stuff sung by Lou Costello and the Andrews Sisters, uh, Connie Haynes, um, Bob Matthews, really great voice, and some other stuff in there too. It's gonna be great, it's probably gonna be about an hour long, but uh, look forward to that, that's gonna be good. Also right now, as we speak, there's a radio station up in Maryland that uh, the time is 8.56, so only four minutes left, but over the last three hours, they've been having a actual program WFWM have been having a Will Osborne marathon, so to speak, 
of mostly, if not entirely, Will Osborne music that's been going up there in celebration of his birthday. Maybe they talk about the book on there, maybe they mention that. Uh, they probably don't, but you know, fingers crossed, fingers crossed on that. The next few days I may put out an announcement about that to see if anything else follows up with that, because I'm talking with the guy who put that show together. And he seems like a really nice guy. What else? Um, Sideman list is being restructured. I don't know if I already mentioned that, but it is. And I'm not going to do anything publicly with that for a while, but I've found a lot more new Sideman information over the last year. And I have reconstructed it all. Not to say that the last list, the one that I published last year, isn't the most accurate thing ever published about him before. It is but there's still a lot of info that I'm keeping to myself for now, uh, but y'all will have to, uh, y'all have to wait a couple of years for that one. But for now, uh, there's one last, there's one last thing, and I've been very excited to make this announcement for over two years now. So a little bit of background for this. Will, whenever he stopped actually band leading in the early 50s about, or at least he wanted to settle down and start doing stuff more locally in a different area. He moved over to Lake Tahoe, Nevada, and he settled down there and became a booking agent and a talent agent for several different places, a couple different hotels, um, casinos, and other venues like that. And while he was there, one of the places was the Gold Hotel, which I believe burned down around 1960 or so. But then there was also, um, well, Harvey's Wagon Wheel Casino. Yes, the same one that got bombed in the 80s. He was there for years, and he did shows with different people that were coming through the area. Shows with people that he knew that were still out on the road, and with other newer acts, like I believe Johnny Ray. Um, definitely some people that had been around for a long time, as well as um, the Four Coins was one. Um, Peggy Lee, um, others like that. I met many, 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 years and years worth. So what he'd do is he would make a tradition out of it, like, oh, you're in town? Well, come over to my house for dinner, and we will have dinner, and we can talk, and we can also jam out. And so he would have a jam session with these people, and they would also be, well, he had a lay youth. So he would actually record acetate 70 RPM records with them. And all of this has been 100% unreleased all this time. There was so much here. Um, I have gotten together with his stepson, his still living stepson, which will remain nameless for the time being. And we've been working for the last two years to get this stuff actually out and be able to uh, have it on transfers for everybody to listen to. We have people like Bing Crosby, Peggy Lee, um, Louis Prima, uh, Bing Crosby, tons of different people, also probably with different people that were in orchestras from time to time, too. So there's between 150 and 270 of these, and all will be out in due time. Soon, I don't know when exactly, but we're definitely going to see them sometime soon. I am really excited as for what this had to offer. Um, so many things, so many questions can be answered with this. So many mysteries can finally be solved after potentially 90 years even. And as well as I think just for the amount of just different people in here, just completely new, completely new content, this will be definitely a huge revelation in the jazz world. Um, and other music parts of the world, honestly, I, I, I feel. So yeah, that's going to be something, probably the biggest thing to look forward to. I am very stoked about it, and I hope that you guys are too. So that's it for me for now, and there will be more, there's definitely going to be more stuff coming, as I said prior. And yeah, I'm looking to 2023 for the book. I'm very excited for it. I'm looking toward the future for that. I'm very envious of what has to come for the next year. This is Sea Porter. I'll see y'all around.